now that we have reached the stage where we have these three different elements working, you have, should have something like this that's growing across the face of your object. The next half of this tutorial is going to be showing you how to make the veins underneath the skin, um, just for some added level of detail if you want to have some sort of veins or structure like appear underneath the skin as it's kind of melting. The another part is we're going to kind of show you how to make these like blood blisters that go up the face and kind of spew blood. So that will be the next step of this tutorial. So let's kind of get started. Let's go back into our head build. And now that we're finished with this section, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to little uh, not put this down a sticky note, but I'm just going to, um, in general, I'm just going to color my outputs yellow just so I know where they are and I can navigate back to them later. Now the next thing I'm going to do is that we have this base mesh, which is basically the base mesh of our entire object. So I'm just going to move these things over here and I'm going to drop down everyone's favorite thing in Houdini for each by number. So the next thing we're going to do, we have to, in order to make this work, we have to basically do a for each loop of things that go across the face. This might take a little bit of effort, but stick with me. So the first thing I've kind of done here is that we have a, I've just dropped down three nodes and we're going to start with this one. So we've put a time shift. So we actually want to freeze the face in a singular position. And so I want to freeze it at the first, um, kind of this first frame because I don't want the deformation to affect my veins. The next thing is I want to do is just I just want to remesh everything so I have something that looks like this. So we'll have an iterations of one over that. And then we'll just do something called detail over once or point, point, point amount. So it's going to be controlled by the point number. And we're just going to plug that in into the for each begin top. And then the fun part begins. So the next part of this is I've dropped down another three nodes. And the reason I'm doing this nodes three by three um, is because I've have to, had to kind of experiment in the background with this as I'm making the tutorial. So I just have to jump ahead ever so slightly. So we want this option to art direct our veins across the character's face. So here is kind of the code that I've set up and it's a set scatter amount. Um, so basically there's a start group and end group and then we're using this to basically create an iteration of how many points we want to scatter across this face and then also kind of use for our lines and our veins and where we want them to start and end. And then we kind of have this copy to points where we are basically going and looking for these target points or scatter that we are um, creating over here because you can set the point group to scatter. So it's looking for that. And then over here, we are just copying a singular sphere to point uh, points. So I'm just going to turn off my Fourier leech loop so you can kind of see what happens um, if we were to do that. Um, so I'm just going to zoom around. It may not work in yet, quite just yet, but the idea is that this sphere is going to kind of create an avoidance system of what we want um, for our veins so they don't entirely cover all of the face. They avoid certain sections of the face and we can kind of better control everything. Then we've kind of added um, these two points. And you can, I think you can see them on the screen there. They're just kind of floating. And in reference to our head, if we just kind of go to this, you can see it's over here. So right after here, we have our scatter and the density that we're using is 234. You can use more than that if you like, but that's just the default I recommend. Um, we're going to come back to the for each lend later, but there's going to be a change that we're going to have to make to that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another wrangle. This wrangle is just going to scatter random points around the head. You can add any really variation of this number. You can just see wh whatever you choose. And then we're going to also create um, another group called end. And basically end group, I'm just going to name this here, end is going to basically be the end of our lines so we can connect everything those are like that's the end group and then there's a start group and we're all good to go from there the idea is that once we connect all these points together we'll basically have a this our start group that we generated up here and our end group down here and then we'll kind of merge these two together but i'll just show you some of the code in case you want to re-reference that as well the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop down a merge Okay, so now that we dropped down our merge, we have to do something a bit tricky. So we have to connect this to our set scatter. And we have to go to the second input of our set scatter and connect it to our meta. It's erroring out, but we'll revisit that very shortly. 
We should have something like this in the scene. Now the next stage of this is that we're gonna add three more nodes. And the, the, this is where Find Shortest Path comes in. So Find Shortest Path connects two groups start and end together, and they form lines. Pretty self-explanatory. So we're just going to merge this into here, into the second input, because we want that to be the start and end groups. And the first input, surface geometry, we have to kind of connect back here to our for each loop. Now above this Find Shortest Path, I've kind of added an attribute create. So this attribute create has an attribute called cost on it that we have set value at zero. And then after this, we've created an attribute noise, also now using our attribute cost, and we've just changed the amplitude ever so slightly, played with the element size, and that's pretty much it. So then that's being plugged into our find shortest path down here. So after we've done find shortest path, you can see that it's starting to work. You should have something that looks like this across the surface of your character's head. So it looks like an actual vein structure going through the skin. Now, you can see on Find Shortest Path, we're using our start point and gr group and an end points group, and then we're using our point attribute called cost. So if I go over here and I change my ampli uh, random attribute noise, that's something like this, it, shouldn't, it should kind of affect the head, but what we can also do is just change different values. So don't do th what I just did, but do something. You can see, like, if I start to give cost different values, it kind of changes the overall structure of the veins as well. You can also see up here, if I go to my, not attribute wrinkle, but my scatter here, it also changes how many lines we can actually connect to each other as well. Now, the what I've done after this is I've added a simple point wrangle, and this is basically going to set up our attributes pass and root number. So that's going to come in, bring in the iteration information in our for each loop and kind of make that attribute accessible so we can work with it. Then I've just taken basically the second input here is getting connected to the metadata up here. And then the first input is just going directly into our find shortest path. Now we've merged this together. We've brought this in here and added a merge and that is going into our output. So the next thing we're going to do is just merge that in with the for each begin and then that should work as well. Sorry, this is a little bit different but there was a little trouble setting this little part of our tutorial up. So from here, we've, we're all set and good to go. So now that we're down at this stage here, you can see that We've got some lovely, we got back down here at the end. I'm just going to remove the piece block path and then that should work. So if we select this, we should have our veins and our skin together like this. So you should have something like this at the end of your for each loop. The next thing you want to do is drop down a delete node. On the delete node, we're basically going to delete our skin. So we're only going to see our geometry like this. And we're basically deleting by expression. Our path pass is not equal to one. So basically, remember that path attribute that we set up up here. That's just using that to delete the skin and keep our lines across the face. So now we want to resample this and use it, you know, model this. So we're going to visualize this and we're going to say, well, those lines look pretty cool and all, but you know, they might need to be resampled just a little bit. So we're going to resample. And that might be two less of points. So we're gonna do something like that. You might notice, okay, if you're resampling this and things are going terribly wrong, um, just keep resampling your lines and dropping down fuses to, actually, let's do maximum segments. Ah, that's worse. So let's do um, subdivision curves to keep that smooth and curvy. And let's use a fuse so we don't have any overlapping elements here. Um, and that's going to prevent, as you can see, we have some intersecting lines. So what I'm going to do are some lines that should be kind of fused together, but they're not. So we're going to go back up here to our resample. And we're going to make sure these lines are as smooth as possible and they don't really intersect as much. So because when we go to model this, if we have um, lines that are super close together that aren't closely fused like these guys, it's going to present some modeling challenges. So I'm just going to resample these to a really high place. And that looks good. Well, doable to me. What we'll do here is we'll go and we'll add a sweep node. 
and we'll go over here and we'll go round tube. And round tube will basically, I like using sweep now over polywire because I find it's a lot lighter and it gives you more modeling options. So we're just going to make this super, super small. And because we don't want our veins to be super chonky. Um, and we're just going to visualize our skin too. So we can kind of see what's happening there. I think those might be a little bit too chonky. And what we're also going to do now is we're going to color this. So we probably want some veins that are both blue and red. So we're going to put down color. We're just going to wait a couple of seconds. And we're going to ramp from attribute. And we're going to, that is both blue and red. There we go, we will use a root number. And it's okay to have like a purple tone in the middle, I think that's okay because really sometimes if you look at your skin, um, because you know our, our arteries and veins are blue and red, um, they sometimes make a purple tone to our flesh as well. So the next thing I want to do is go up here and reference our base mesh again because we want these to kind of work. Now that you can see these veins kind of popping out of the skin here, that's exactly where we want them to be, but we don't want the veins to be on the skin itself. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some Houdini trickery, and I'm also going to cache this out. So we're going to call these veins, and we're going to say non-time dependent, so it's saved to disk and background. And while that's saving out, we're going to go to our point of form and add the animation back onto this mesh. So now that this is static, we want to go back up here where we time shifted everything. And we are going to just bring those connections all the way down here to this point of form. We should have these kind of wires or veins as we'll put them moving with our head animation now. Sometimes we have to lower the maximum points to get it to work, otherwise Houdini will scream at us. So now the next thing we're going to do is we have to delete and blast away um, these wire of uh, these veins where we don't want them. So we want to go grab our total burn attribute that's eating away our flesh that we have up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go attribute transfer. Plug this into here, and we're, this is where we're deleting total burn. So I'm probably going to go up here, steal this, and go over here, grab total burn, and just turn down the distance threshold, because sometimes we can dial this in a little bit later. Now let's go to our blast node, so we're going to use a blast node, and we're going to just plug this in here, and we're going to go at total burn. Houdini is going to think about its life choices for a second. We're going to go points, yeah, so we can kind of see it there. We might have too high of a value. We might have to go back to our attribute transfer and make sure the radius is bigger as well. Now, this is kind of doable. Uh, we do want to have some of the veins intersect with the blood, so I'm going to lower this down to a super low value. So we can kind of get that intersection to occur. And if it doesn't, that's that's all right. But preferably, I think that's looking all right. So what we'll do next is we're going to add another file cache. And we are going to say veins eat. And we're going to go save to disk in background. The next thing we're going to do is do a null. And we are going to go out veins. And I'm just going to color this yellow as well. And I'm going to group everything that we just made in another kind of subnet. And I'm also going to label this as things. So now we have four stages of this growth. And now the fun part's going to begin where we're going to have to simulate the growth going up the face and also the blood spurting out. So I'm just going to go up here. And I'm going to also create another geo node, and I'm going to go veins, and I'm going to go into here, into this object, and now we have some interesting things starting to happen. Now you might say, okay, well the veins are showing up way before the growth does, so we might have to go back in and dial that in a little bit better. So let's do that. 
because we want every the veins to kind of be hidden on frame one. So we're gonna go cancel cook, go back to our blast node, obviously, and we are going to go like that. We're also going to see if we need to lower our radius and we're just gonna keep dialing this in until we like it. So I'm just gonna go to a random frame and I'm gonna see how this blast is working and compare it to everything. Um, see if we can see our vein structure show up, and if it doesn't, let's fix it. For whatever reason, my viewport is not refreshing, so we are going to go to Reset Viewport up in the Labs tool. Yeah, it's not showing up. We are going to... We, let's go back to our point of form and see why this is happening the way it is. We might have to rearrange some things, because it looks like Houdini does not like us using the geometry and you know, projecting everything back onto it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn off my veins cache and rearrange some things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my sweep below here. That's still not working. So I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try a ray. So sometimes ray works better. Um, we're just going to go grab our animation, plug it into there. Okay, that looks, that looks good. Or maybe not. I'm going to hide all objects while we figure this out. We might have to go over here where we're bringing in our geometry, um, because this is kind of where we're eating everything away. I have a feeling that's causing some issues, so what we'll do is we'll just plug this input um, that is going to this into the second input of our ray, um, and we'll just plug it into that point of form up there. And I think that will have a better result on the simulation. Because sometimes if your point count changes and you're trying to you know have things follow along, it won't really work out. So we're going to plug that into there, get rid of our point of form, and from here we're going to just recache our veins cache and go save go to our sweep, and now we got our veins. Those are looking way better. So now let's go down to our total burn and try and re-blast this and get it to work properly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go like this. And now that's, I think that's working a lot more successfully. So let's show where our veins are. Cool. Okay, we might have to rearrange some other things as well. So we're gonna put the sweep actually below here. And we're going to see if we can still figure out why this total burn that we're putting on top of our things here is not working. So we're going to go color and then color by attribute. So I'm going to bring in a ramp total burn. And I think once again, we're sampling from the wrong place. So we're going to go move this little line up here that's going where our total burn is. And just bring that up there. So it's going to sample our point of form. So basically it's the point of form is now going into our attribute transfer. So now this should be working fine now where we only see, you can see the white area is where the radius of total burn is. And now we're going to go blast, not delete salon selected, but now we should have some veins that look pretty good like that. Perfect. So those are shown up just nicely. I'm going to just color, um, these veins differently again because I'm seeing more blue than red and unless you want that I'm just going to go over here and I'm just gonna bring in more rain red to uh, our veins just swap it out like that so we're gonna go save to disk and background save and now we can cache everything out I think this is good to go and we can move on to the other section of our tutorial which is the final two bits on the skin the blood boils on the skin, and then also the blood kind of spurting out. 